you could have hair pieces or a mohawk or things like that where you felt kind of kind of tough and cool but then there's yeah. the ones where you're like oh my god i look ridiculous <laughs> oh that guy's a creep not fun. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> How are you doing? How's everything going? I'm doing good. I'm saying hello from uh, Nashville. This is my my uh, rental. I'm a little alligator from Louisiana, but uh, <laughs> this is my rental right now. I'm actually in escrow for a house out here in Nashville. That's awesome. Um, so it's kind of exciting. That's awesome. Why why live in Nashville? What's your uh, music city? Yeah. I mean, look, I, I've always played music. Music's always been a huge part of my life, but uh, country hasn't really been a part of it. Maybe that's a natural transition as you get older. I know that my uh, dad does, my dad, that happened to my dad and that's what he's telling me. And he's been telling me since I grew up and I'm becoming quite fond of country music too. Um, but I think it's more of, uh, more of a country vibe of life while still having a little bit of the city. Um, I love Los Angeles. I'll always be connected to it. You know, I grew up there um, and I'll always keep something there, but I think I just wanted something with a little more property in a backyard and, and kind of have a little bit of a separation. I feel you. I feel you. Um, okay. I want you to weigh in on the number one internet debate right now. I'm curious what you think. I wouldn't know what that is. So I yeah, can't I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay, all right. I'm going to tell you what it is. So everybody is asking whether there are more wheels or doors in the world. Wheels or doors? Yes. And the more you think about it, the more it like scrambles your brain because you're like, oh, office buildings have so many doors. But then you're like, but every chair has five wheels and every car, like it's just... I don't know. Well, well, not every chair, right? Maybe office chairs, but yeah. I'm I'm sitting in a chair with no wheels at a at a table with a bunch of chairs with no wheels. But I don't know. Maybe doors. Maybe it's doors. I like how deep you can get into that with you know having the more doors opening up uh, to you know different parts of life and different situations. I mean, you can get pretty uh, you can get pretty spiritual on that if you wanted to. Yeah, it depends on what you consider a door. And I'm sorry I did this to you because right. it's going to be a thing like later on in the day, you're going to be like, oh, man, there are a lot of wheels or there are a lot of doors. Well, that's I'm ultimately going to be thinking, I'm going to see the new house that I'm in escrow with. So I'm going to check out all the doors and wheels. So <laughs> you, you got me hooked on it now. <laughs> well, you have so much in the pipeline right now. It's going to be like the, yeah. the winter, spring of Shane West, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, what is it like when like you kind of have all these projects coming up at once because you work on them on different times and then they kind of all come out at once or years apart. It's exciting. I mean, the, you know, the the newest ones coming out were, I guess that makes a little bit sense, a bit of sense were the oldest ones, like, you know, um, with Outsiders coming out on, on, on Friday, March 11th. That was a year ago that it premiered at Tribeca. So 2021 was just kind of a wild, well, it was a wild year for the entire world, but uh, from a uh, work perspective, I finished... I did about five films, five, five small indies that were all completely different and all very exciting to me because that because that they were different. Um, and they're all kind of coming out now. It's all this, this spring and summer of 2022, and that's exciting. So then you get to see them all come out, do some press for it, hope people like it. And it's all starting now, I guess. Yeah, I, I was talking to somebody about this. It's like, you know, the last two years as as awful as they've been have also been kind of a little bit of a halftime for people where they kind of think about what do I want to do? Am I happy in my career? And it seems like you were like, oh, I'm going, I'm going into work. Yeah, I did. I started the first and this is coming out in May. It's also, I guess, something that we could talk about, but Escape the Field. I did this fun, fun thriller in Canada in the summer of 2020, which was wild because as we know, you know, that was only a few months into the pandemic. So it was a far different experience working on that one than it was the others. But it was something that I, I felt like I had to go to work. I felt like I'd rather make those decisions and roll the dice and, you know, wear a mask 24 seven or what I needed, whatever I needed to do to not be stuck at home. And then it just kind of exploded into 2021 where the project started coming. It wasn't always a big budgeted thing because a lot of times it was hard to get insurance for a lot of those films. So when one just kept coming after another, it all really started in, I guess, June of 2021. I just kept saying that. As long as it was something that felt good to me and, fe and felt like I could 
be happy with what I did at the end, then I wanted to keep traveling. I wanted to try all these different places. I got to film in Mexico, Orange County, not like that's a huge thing, but it was like, I got to go to Orange County. <laughs> all the way to, to Orange County. All the way to Orange County. Uh, I did Hawaii. Sometimes it feels like a different place. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it does. It <laughs> definitely does. Um, but I got to go to Hawaii. I got to film in Hawaii, Mexico, Orange County, Tennessee. It, ju it just kept coming, uh, Canada, it just kept going and it was pretty great. Yeah. So the outsiders will be well, at the time of recording. It's coming out Friday, but it'll it'll be out. Um, Got it. And I really liked this movie. It, it has this, you know, this commentary on like racism and law enforcement. But then there's also this horror alien element at play. What what hooked you on that script? Well, I think sometimes bringing in the 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 element of the fantastic, so to speak, the element of fantasy or sci-fi into real life problems um, can kind of help the viewers ease into thinking about what's truly going on. And I think that's kind of, I think that's unique. I know it's, it's not certainly not a first films have done that uh, over the years, but I think that also the reason why they do that is it's a very uh, easy way to ease into that. So uh, that stood out to me. The, I had a coffee with uh, the wonderful director, Delmar Washington, and we, it, sometimes you just get the feeling, you know, this was one of those ones, this is pre, this was the year, this is 2019, so the year before uh, the pandemic hit. You know, it was, the, 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 how the mystery unfolds in the film and how it unfolded in the script and the surprise ending, which I, I pr probably shouldn't talk about, so I'd rather the viewers see it, <laughs> um, you know, was also something that hooked me. I was intrigued that they were willing to end a film like this with so many what ifs and so many, you know, so that that was exciting for me too. Also, I got to kind of change my appearance and kind of change it up and do something I hadn't done before. And we added a lot. I mean, look, I do have grays, I'm not gonna lie, in this, in this, in this crappy beard right now. But uh we added a lot of, you know, white and grays to it, to my hair, to my to, to my just uh aged me up. As you can see, I have a son, a fully grown son in this film which is a first uh, for me. The character, the sheriff is not the greatest guy in the world, but he's somewhere in between. There's a lot of shades of gray and I, that's fun to play with too. So, I mean, all of those things really hooked me on it. And uh, then when I actually showed up to set to see some of the performance from some of these actors, that was, that, you know, that was, uh, made me a lot more comfortable. Yeah, that, you had like a silver fox thing going on. I like that. that. I couldn't be more of a silver fox than I was in that movie, that's for sure. I do love your facial hair journey throughout movies, like in Gossamer Folds, it's like, you got Oh that. God, <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. Uh, that one was terrible. In Gossamer Folds, which I'm excited about, we got uh, nominated for a GLAAD award this year, which is exciting for outstanding film. Thank you. I'm really happy for them. That was a few years ago. You know, so to get that finally out um, is, is also exciting. But they, the director, Lisa, who's phenomenal, she wanted the handlebar mustache. She wanted the guy to be, you know, listening to REO Speedwagon and Journey and driving a, you know, kind of a, a falling apart Trans Am, so to speak, and have the handlebar mustache. I think he's cooler than he actually is. And I did it. It was awkward in my personal life, just going to a <laughs> restaurant or or not even, I'm not even saying from a dating perspective, just anything, going to a grocery store, a restaurant. It wasn't a pandemic, so, you know, no masks covering anything and have to walk around with that handlebar mustache was a little embarrassing, but. I always think about that. I was just talking to Steve Ag from Peacemaker who had to have this like terrible dyed beard. Oh. And he was like, oh, he yeah. was the worst because I was like going to Starbucks and going to things and I was like, oh, like this is. <laughs> There's very, it's always like it could work in your favor or not. I remember when I was doing this film based on the germs, what we do is secret uh, a long time ago, that was punk rock. And it was, the, it was the beginning of punk rock days in Los Angeles and New York. So you had some cool appearances that you could walk around with. Like you could have hair pieces or a mohawk or things like that, where you felt kind of kind of tough and cool. But then there's yeah. the ones where you're like, oh my God, I look ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that guy's and a creep. Not fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I'm sure you are aware that it is also a milestone anniversary of one, A Walk to Remember, the 20th. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Oh man, I love that movie so much. I mean, oh, it's well, just like, you. and it's like, I, I love because, you know, some people look back and they're like, oh man, like it would be nice to reunite with my co-stars and stuff. But you and Mandy have been like tight throughout the years. And I think that's really awesome. Well, there was always a genuine connection there. And I think that's what, she grew up on that film. I mean, I guess I grew up on that film too. Um, and to have something do so well at an early 
uh, stage of your career, I think can genuinely connect, you know, one another. And I think that's what the, the whole cast is really connected in that sense. But Mandy and I obviously have being the, 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 the love story part of the love story. Yeah. It was just, we inherently cared about each other and that's, that's, that's what, you know, kind of keeps the connection going. We'd love to work together again and talk about it all the time. It just depends on what would that project be? And, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to mess up what you had already started. So you, you want, you want it to make sense so that it's not just some sort of cash grab or, 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 or something like that. You want it to be, uh, something that could stand out as well. Yeah, how has that not happened yet? I don't know. I mean, for a while, look, I mean, I did ER for three years, not too long after that film, but then I did seven years straight of of television where it was Nikita, La Femme Nikita for four straight years into three straight years of Salem. Not as much time. Mandy was doing all sorts of things and then she gets This Is Us, which she's been doing for four or five straight years now. Yeah. So I'm not on television right now. This could be, and she's ending her, uh, I believe her final season. So maybe there's something that can go, whether it's television or film, we'll see. Oh, that would be amazing. I know she just gave an interview and I think it was like, she was like, oh, like, if they did a reboot, maybe like Olivia Rodrigo or something could play. Like, who would you want to see play Landon if you had to cast somebody? No clue. No <laughs> clue. I would give that up uh, to to the viewers, to the obviously the production team, whoever would be thinking uh, who the right person would be. I'm not the biggest fan of reboots. Um, yeah. I, I, it, there are some that really work. Um, but I think the weirdest thing is rebooting films that have already done a great, like that were already great or already good or already successful. I feel like what, what thing, something that gets miss, missing in this whole reboot thing is why not take something that wasn't very good and making it better or, or that kind of stuff. We don't really tend to do that for a lot of things, but you know, we can't really do a sequel with this movie, uh, cause that would be awkward, but the, but I, I think, you know, it might make a little bit more sense just to write a new love story. Yeah. New characters and new, you know, that's how I feel about it. But no, I'm just, with you. I just, you know, by the way, if they do. Oh, sorry. No, I was like, I'm with you. I just feel like sometimes it's inescapable. You're just like, well. <laughs> right. And I feel like, by the way, if they did, um, uh, I, I would absolutely go see it and support it for sure. It's not a negative thing. It's more of, I believe there's other ideas out there. I agree. I agree. I want to bring up my favorite Shane West movie that I think is criminally underrated. Like, I feel like it's okay. a hidden gem. Get over it. That movie <laughs> deserves so much more reverence. Incredible cast, hilarious musical numbers. One of my favorites. Yeah. I have no questions yeah. about it. I just wanted to bring it up. <laughs> no, get o look, Get Over it was one of the, was one of the cooler experiences of my life. It was, I was only 22 on that one and it's filmed in Toronto. And yes, I agree. I, I feel, I felt a little bummed for that film because it was a great cast. It was a cool concept and Martin Short is a genius. It was funny. And I got to do a lot of comedy and have a horrible fake British accent that switched from Australian to British to, to nothing. Like basically I never, one of the, one of the little things is, is when the director saw like my take on it, they said, don't learn anything don't learn anything properly and just speak however you want to speak because this character is kind of a joke so that's going to work out perfectly um so i basically just i didn't study or anything i just kind of just did a horrible accent the whole time it was a lot of fun i love that that was <laughs> intentional i always wondered that. <laughs> i started getting paranoid i was like hey i don't know what i'm doing so does anybody want to help me out here a little bit and they're like no not at all He's a fake. He's a fraud. So just be a fraud. I was like, okay, all right, here we go. Oh my God. I love that. <laughs> By the uh, way. So you also did Gotham as Bane. Yeah. And I'm curious, like, yeah. do you feel kind of a kinship to movies that are out? Like when the Batman comes out, do you feel like a kinship to kind of go see that support that? Cause you're kind of part of that universe in, in a way, in a way. Yes. Look, I'm a huge Batman fan anyway. So when Gotham came to me, you know, it was their final season. They knew it was their final season and they saved a couple of villains for that uh, for that final ride. And Bane was one of them. When they came to me for Bane, I was like, well, that's my favorite Batman villain. So in no way am I saying no to this. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta make this work. 
Um, and the obviously Gotham was very well known for doing their different takes on on the backgrounds and the history and the, obviously the age that jumped in. Uh, uh, that was Batman was so young on that show and Catwoman was so young on that show. Um, but I thought it was it was unique. It was a fun to join a show. I had never done that before. I'd always been a part of the beginning of a of a series. Mm. Uh, oh, well, I guess besides ER, um, but like joining it at the very end and playing this character that was so iconic was a lot of fun. <clears throat> it makes me very excited about the new Batman movie, which I haven't seen yet, but I'm excited to see. And I've loved watching uh, all of the Batman films, really. I mean, I'm obviously like others more than more than others, but um, but it's always exciting to be a part of it. Um, I wish it was just bigger. You know, it would have been more fun to play with that character more and to go longer, but it being the final season, that kind of that kind of just wrapped it up pretty quickly. So would you like another crack at like another comic book character? 100%. I, by the way, look, I was, when the Bane thing came to me, thankfully they made him more of a military guy that had lost his way, that turns into Bane. Because I was very slim. I wasn't putting on Tom Hardy muscle at the time uh, as he had done. Um, I wasn't some jacked, you know, super freak as they had made Bane be in the comic books. So yeah, there's plenty of characters that, I mean, I'm like, Harvey Dent would be something fun to play. You know, it'd be fun to play a Two-Face. Um, you know, certain things that might you might slide into the character a little easier. But look, if you're not playing Batman, which I mean, sure, a lot of people would love to play, um, playing the villains, man, that's the way to go. Like, there's there's plenty of plenty of, I would love to give my uh, uh, to give a try with. What's your thing? Like, do you what, what do you love to go watch? Are you like a reality TV person? Are you a comic book movie person, a Star Wars person? Like, what's your thing? Right now, I'm just hooked on series, especially. And um, but um, I not a reality TV. Uh, most of my friends know that I'm way, way, way lost if I ever have to talk about anything reality TV based because <laughs> I just I just don't ever end up sitting down to watch it. But so I'm way behind on that. But look, comic books are always fun. It's something that I've wanted to be a part of. I'd love to get a bigger role or presence in the comic book world, whether it's a DC, Marvel, independent, whatever it might be, because that's just fun. I mean, let's let's face it, that's exciting. Um, you get to be a superhero. Who doesn't want to do that? Or a supervillain. Who doesn't want to do that? Um, love Star Wars. Always love that stuff. I just finished the Boba Fett. I was hooked on the Mandalorian. Um, you know, you see the Kenobi trailer? I have not seen it yet, but this, Dude. Morning, Dude. this morning I saw something pop up and I'm like, all right, I guess I'm gonna watch that too. <laughs> Go watch it immediately after this. It is okay. so good. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, look, being a part of the Star Wars universe would be amazing too. Yeah, I love that. I mean, it's really hard to say no to that, right? Hard to say no. Sorry, I just saw Hamilton and now I wanna sing all the Hamilton songs. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been really awesome talking to you. Is there anything? I mean, I feel like you have so much coming up that I, I still haven't mentioned, like Chariot with John Malkovich. And yeah, well, I mean, look, we got the Outsiders, which is uh, is the thing that's happening now, which we're excited about. Uh, so uh, March 11th, but yeah, we have uh, this wild, wacky movie I did with John Malkovich, which was a uh, blessing uh, called Chariot. That's going to come out on a video demand in theaters April 15th. A really exciting movie that I did, well, that's what I was saying in 2020, called Escape the Field with Theo Rossi. Uh, that's May 6th coming out in in, uh, in in theaters and on demand. And we'll have to come back and talk about some more. I've got a film actually a start start in uh, and helped produce called Mid-Century and another one called Homestead that I helped produce because I'm trying oh. to get into the whole producing thing. And this wacky Spanish musical based off of a telenovela that I shot in Mexico called La Usadora which I'm really excited about too, because you've never seen, I mean, this character is a little bit like your oddly, uh, your, your, your favorite movie, uh, Get Over It. Um, he's very over the top and very obnoxious. And I do have to sing in that movie in my underwear. So oh, that's gonna be a- uh, That's a hook. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's a hook. Maybe yeah. I didn't sell it properly. I'm like, <laughs> run, for run for the hills. You don't want to see this one. No, um, man. But no. No, it's it'll, it'll it's going to be very entertaining. So we can come back for sure and talk about this. Thing. Yeah, I was going to say let's let's circle back in a few months. We'll keep doing this. <laughs> Perfect.